potassium sparing diuretics as the topic. And potassium sparing diuretics are a very unique class of diuretics. And diuretics, by definition, are medications that increase uh, the urine output. So they basically increase the water excreted by the kidney. Now the term potassium sparing, I'm using K as the symbol for potassium, essentially means that in addition to uh, the urine, they are actually not kicking out the potassium. So they're keeping the potassium in the bloodstream. One of the more common side effects uh, or consequences of using diuretics is that, sure, you uh, excrete water in the urine, which is, uh, you know, to be uh, encouraged in certain conditions. But unfortunately, in addition to increasing the excretion of water, you also increase the excretion of certain vital electrolytes, such as potassium. So these potassium sparing diuretics are able to keep the potassium in the bloodstream while just excreting the water. So potassium is a very tightly regulated electrolyte in the body and the normal value is between 3.5 to 5.0 milliequivalents per liter. And um, even small amounts uh, of increase or decrease can cause symptomatology. So if the potassium, for example, is 5.5, this may not seem like a big deal as a number, but it can cause symptoms. Similarly, a potassium level of, let's say, 2.9 may not seem like a big deal, uh, but it uh, causes uh, symptomatology. So you want to keep this number um, in this normal range. Now, how do these medications do this? Well, there is in the kidney a tubule known as the distal convoluted tubule. And normally, these diuretics will work by bringing back some electrolytes and kicking out some electrolytes, and by kicking out water. And where are they doing this from? Well, they're doing it from the bloodstream. So I'll illustrate the bloodstream in red. So there's a relationship going on. And this tubule, essentially, which I've drawn in black, is where the urine is excreted out of. The distal convoluted tubule essentially is a part of the kidney, it's part of the nephron. So let's talk a little bit about how do these potassium sparing diuretics work. Well, normally what you have is a scenario where sodium is brought back from the urine into the bloodstream and as is water and potassium is kicked out. What these diuretics do is they essentially block this so the opposite happens. So if you kind of use the black to represent what's normal, I'll use the blue to represent what the diuretics are doing. The diuretics are doing this. They're actually kicking out sodium and water into the urine and then they're bringing back potassium into the bloodstream. And then eventually the sodium and water go out into the urine. So the blue represents what the potassium sparing diuretic medications are doing. So as you can see, they are bringing back potassium into the bloodstream, so you're keeping potassium, and then they're kicking out the sodium in the water, so you increase the urine amount because the amount of water being kicked out has been increased. So without further ado, what are the names of these potassium sparing diuretics? Well, the way I remembered the names is that potassium stays. Potassium stays in your bloodstream. So the S, T, and the A are the first letters of the three potassium sparing diuretics. So the S is spironolactone. The T is triamterene. And the A is amyloride. So those are the three uh, potassium sparing diuretics that I wanted to discuss. So why would you use these medications? Uh, what are the possible usages? 
Well, one of the most common usages uh, is uh, high blood pressure. Uh, another very common indication for use is edema. Any kind of uh, swelling, any kind of condition that increases swelling in the body, for example, congestive heart failure. And also, you use them in any kind of condition in which you want to prevent uh, the patient from developing low uh, potassium. So you want to prevent hypokalemia, you would give a potassium sparing diuretic. What are some of the side effects of these medications? Well, interestingly, because they keep potassium, sometimes what can happen is you can have the other effect, the opposite effect, is that you have too much potassium in your bloodstream, so the potassium level can be greater than 5.0. And then another uh, very common finding is that this can lead to muscle cramps because potassium is involved in um, the normal function of muscle. And uh, when are they contraindicated, meaning when should you not use them? And the big contraindication is that if a patient has any condition that can cause or lead to hyperkalemia, or the patient is at risk of developing hyperkalemia, then you shouldn't obviously use potassium-sparing diuretics because they will just exacerbate that. They will make the hyperkalemia worse. So let's take a look at a couple of clinical vignettes, see what this looks like. 55-year-old man consults a physician because of episodic weakness and paresthesias. On one occasion, he experienced transient paralysis. The patient has also been experiencing polyuria and polydipsia. Vital signs demonstrate blood pressure of 140 over 100 normal temperature, pulse and respirations. Remainder of the physical exam is unremarkable and shows no significant abnormal neurologic function findings and no peripheral edema. Routine screening chemistry studies are remarkable only for a serum potassium of 2.1. CT scan demonstrates a small adrenal mass. Which of the following is the most appropriate pharmacotherapy to treat this patient's hypertension? So. A lot of things going on in this question. What the question is asking is that this patient has developed high blood pressure. So you want to choose a medication to treat his blood pressure issues. But we obviously have a situation here in that his potassium is quite low. Remember, normal is between 3.5 and 5, and 2.1 is quite low. And I suspect that some of the symptomatology that he's having is because of the value being so low. So you want to give a medication that will both treat his blood pressure and help raise his potassium level. And that's where the potassium sparing diuretics come in. And of the ones listed, the most uh, appropriate one would be spironolactone. Next question. A 60-year-old woman presents uh, for a routine checkup. Her only complaint is that she occasionally experiences a little swelling in her ankles. Serum potassium is 3.5. So the physician wants to avoid unnecessary potassium losses. Which of the following diuretics would be most appropriate? So you have a little bit of edema in her ankles, and you want to treat that. And you want to give a diuretic to help her remove some of that excess fluid. But at the same time, she's sitting at that borderline there, you don't want her to lose any more potassium. So which diuretic would be appropriate in which she can both accomplish uh, resolution of her edema and also be able to retain some of that potassium, maybe, maybe bring it up to 3.6 or 3.7 so that she doesn't become hypokalemic. And that is, of course, a potassium-sparing diuretic. And of the ones listed, that would be triumpterine. And then finally, last one, you're seeing a 79-year-old woman with hypertension, diabetes, coronary artery disease, and rheumatoid arthritis in your office for a routine follow-up visit. Her meds include spironolactone, amyloride, NPH insulin, aspirin, prednisone, and ketorolac. Her temperature is 98, blood pressure is 99 over 56, pulse is 58, and respirations are 19. Physical exam is unremarkable. An EKG shows a sinus rhythm, non-specific ST, and T-waved abnormalities. Serum sodium is 136. Serum potassium is 5.8. A review of her lab values over the past six months indicate that her serum potassium has been gradually increasing. The most appropriate management at this time is. Well, 
Uh, potassium is tightly regulated, so 5.8 is actually a very high. It may not seem that high, but it actually is. So why is this happening? Well, if you look at her medications, she's on two potassium-sparing diuretics. Not sure why she's on two. Her blood pressure is actually a little low, so she's probably being over-medicated. She has too much uh, blood pressure medicines being given. So she probably needs to have one of those blood pressure medicines discontinued. And that would definitely bring her blood pressure up back to normal, which, I mean, normal varies from person to person, but generally speaking, the absolute normal is 120 over 80. In addition to the fact that she is getting too many blood pressure medications, she also is getting two blood pressure medications that are raising her potassium because they're both potassium sparing diuretics and that's why her potassium is so high. So discontinuing one of them would probably be the best choice. And of the choices listed, that would be choice C, discontinuing her amyloride. If that happens, the blood pressure will most likely go back up and the potassium value will go back down.